from the Daily Gazette. Preacher got code of tar in night, published May 9, 1918. Neighbors of Reverend Gastrock of Warden Neighborhood didn't like his attitude. At a recent church entertainment, Gastrock soundly scored part-on program given in English by daughter of Nick Alt, prominent citizen of the community. Reverend Gastrock, for nine years pastor of the German Lutheran Church at Warden, 16 miles southwest of Lawrence, was taken from his home at 9 o'clock last night and given a coat of tar as punishment for his pro-Germanism. Mr. Gastrock was at home when an automobile drove up and stopped and a man went to the door and inquired for a lantern. He got the lantern and went to the automobile, and when he reached the car, he was sieged. A lap robe thrown over his head, he was thrown into the machine, which was started up at once, and he was taken half a mile down the road. There were three men in the automobile, and the three men constituted the entire party. When the machine was stopped, Mr. Gastrock was taken from the machine, his shirt was torn off, and the tar was applied front and back. He was left to get home half a mile or so, the best he could. Mrs. Gasrock, who went to the car with her husband, ran screaming after the machine as he was kidnapped and was greatly affected by the proceedings. An investigation into the circumstances of the affair this morning by Deputy Sheriff Geo Scholes and by Police Chief J.M. Boyd failed to reveal any of the participants. A Gazette representative was also unable to find out the names of the members of the mob. Mr. Gastrock told officers that he was a pacifist, did not believe in war at all, and that was the reason he had not bought Liberty Bonds. He thought buying bonds would prolong the war. He said he had contributed $25 to the Red Cross. Gastrock owns two good farms in the neighborhood, besides other property, and was advised by the officers to go at once to the committee for his township and invest in bonds, which he promised to do. He was also told to preach Americanism and patriotism from his pulpit and to put the stars and stripes above his church next Sunday, and this, too, he promised to do. The officers learned while they were making their investigations that services in Gastrock's church were always conducted in German, and a German school was in operation in his neighborhood. At a recent church entertainment, all of the numbers were given in German, but one, and when a daughter of Nick Alt, a well-known resident of the community gave a number in English, she was soundly and publicly scored by Mr. Gastrock for doing so. On another occasion, a story goes Mr. Gastrock asked members of his congregation who were present at a church meeting to stand up if they sympathized with Germany. All but one man stood, and Mr. Gastrock is alleged to have left his pulpit and went down to the man to ask him why he did not stand. The reply was a blow on the jaw that floored the preacher. When the officers arrived this morning, Mr. Gastrock was removing the evidence of his tar bath and had about recovered from the treatment. It is pretty safe to say that the matter of the purchase of bonds will be looked after by the committee to which it was referred by the officers, and it will not be strange if there is a delegation present at the next church services to see that Mr. Gastrock carries out his promise to talk right. From the Lawrence Daily Journal Warden Church Denies Stories Board of Trustees brands as lies the pro-German talk Declares all are true citizens of America Resent attack on their citizenship in statement issued to the newspapers today Present proof that the Reverend Mr. Gastrock had contributed $25 to Red Cross before Tar Party A public denial of the charges of disloyalty and pro-Germanism made against the Reverend Gustav Gastrock of the Willow Springs Church at Warden, south of Lawrence, was made today by members of the board of the church. The charges included a statement to the effect that the Reverend Gastrock had requested all members of his church who were sympathizers of the Kaiser to stand up and that he had expostulated with the only member of the congregation who remained seated. It was also charged against him that he refused to make appeals from the pulpit in favor of the Red Cross and the Liberty Loans. May 9th, three men called at the home of the pastor of the German Lutheran Church and taking him in a car, carried him about a mile and there stripped his clothes off and painted his back and breast with tar. Through it was stated at the time that the trustees of the church would issue a denial of the charges which caused the tarring. None was forthcoming until this morning. The statement, which was sent to the Lawrence Journal World, 
was signed by the pastor himself and the three members of the church board, C. H. Stobner, secretary and treasurer of the church, W. H. Hornberger and William Schwartz, trustees. It is dated May 28th at Baldwin, where the meeting of the church board was held, and reads as follows. In view of the misleading statements circulated after the night attack made on Reverend Gastrock of the Willow Springs Church, we, the pastor and members of the church board, desire to correct the false impression created. The story printed in the various papers that Reverend Gastrock had requested the members of his congregation to arise who sympathize with Germany, that all but one arose, and that the pastor left the pulpit to argue with that one and was knocked down by him. This story we individually and collectively branded as an infamous lie. Furthermore, the story that Mr. Gastrock had refused to speak in favor of the Red Cross is another lie, as he is a follower of Jesus Christ and would never allow himself to oppose any work of mercy. At the time the last Red Cross drive was to be mentioned in the church, Mr. Gastrock was absent from his pulpit. Furthermore, the story that Mr. Gastrock had not contributed to the Red Cross only under compulsion after the attack made upon him is another untruth, as he holds a receipt for $25 voluntarily contributed to the Red Cross by him and paid to Mr. Beek's cashier of the Baldwin Bank on May 3rd, six days before the dastardly attack upon him. We are Americans, many members of the Church of the Second Generation born here, and cannot let these false attacks on our citizenship go unanswered. We thank you in advance for the publication of this statement. Now, with the reading of these articles, I'd like to add a couple of things. Usually I don't comment on any of the articles that I read, as they should speak for themselves. However, in this case, I am distantly related to the Reverend Gastrock. It was a story that was talked about in my family, or at least uh, discussed by one of my grandparents. The way the story was told to me was that Gastrock was tarred and feathered specifically for speaking German during World War I at his congregations. Now, reading these articles, we can tell that things might have been a bit more complicated than just anti-German sentiment at the time. But what can be added is that preceding these incidents, uh, Reverend Gastrock actually fled to Texas um, because of the backlash of this event. From there, the story kind of goes cold as a lot of the people that would be around to know him are deceased at this point. Um, it, it, however, is an interesting story of local Kansas history. I hope you enjoyed this little nugget of obscure history.